Hi, I'm Bruce Kirchhoff, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to tell you about my work with visual learning and to tell you about the visual learning software that I have developed. Imagine that you want a student to learn a new concept. This could be something very abstract, like an artistic style, or something concrete, like how to identify a species of plant. I have developed a simple but effective way to teach conceptual material like this based on the latest research in cognitive psychology. My colleagues and I have conducted experimental tests to show that these methods are effective. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how these techniques work and learn about the research that shows that they're effective. Let's take a look. I'll show you the software in operation in a minute, but let's start on a more conceptual level. An important key to the techniques is to understand that we represent concepts by sets of images. Here we see the artistic style cubism represented by a group of images. While this is far fewer images than we would normally use in the software, you can immediately see the advantage of using multiple images to define a concept. This is especially obvious if we think about asking students to pick out the cubist elements in a proto-cubist work of art, or to understand the difference between great art and kitsch. Using sets of images also allows us to teach students to recognize parts of images, as in this example of chemical compounds with amine groups. The students learn to focus on what is similar in the images, the functional group, and to ignore the parts of the image that vary between representations. In the case of organism representation, we use multiple standardized photographs of the organism so that students build up a picture of the plant or animal in their minds and so can more effectively recognize when they encounter it in nature. So how does the software work? Let's see it in action. At its very simplest level, a student sees an image displayed upon the screen for a relatively short period of time and must respond with the appropriate name. Here the appropriate response is the artistic style of the work of art. The student gets positive feedback after every correct answer. If a student enters an incorrect answer, he or she gets the chance to see the correct answer before redoing the question. This always leaves the student with a feeling of accomplishment. The same image naming process can be used to teach functional group recognition in organic chemistry or organism recognition in systematic biology. Of course, there's much more to these techniques than I have time to explain in this short video, but this gives you the basic idea. In order to test the effectiveness of these techniques, my colleagues and I conducted a controlled experiment in a classroom setting. The class was an undergraduate class in plant systematics, which included a large component of plant identification. Both the students and the plants were divided into two groups in a within-subject experimental design whose structure is shown in this slide. The students were given weekly assignments with the software for half of the plants, while they learned the other half with traditional study methods, such as flashcards. The name of the program that we used is Visual Learning Plant Identification, or VLPI for short. At the end of the semester, we found that the students did up to 25% better on the plants that they learned with the software. These results have recently been published in the journal CBE Life Science Education. Six months after the class ended, we came back and retested the students. Naturally, we found a decrease in their ability to identify plants, but they still did significantly better on those plants that they learned with VLPI. So you see, we've developed an effective way of teaching conceptual material. Click on the link if you'd like to learn more.